Hi everyone, it's Chris at The Vinyl Orchard back with a video. I just want to share some of the albums I've picked up since my last video about three weeks ago. So this is a, a 10 albums, proper eclectic mix actually. So I'd be fascinated to know your thoughts on, on what I've found over the last few weeks in the comments below. Uh, first one up is the debut album from Caravan from 1968. Although if you know this album, you'll know this cover's different because this is an early 70s repress. So Canterbury scene band Caravan. Um, I like this album actually. It's kind of, it's quite subtle, it's quite inventive, it's quite proggy, uh, psyche definitely. Um, few tracks I really like on this actually. So uh, Place of My Own, which opens the album. It's proper ethereal actually. And the, the track that opens up Side 2, Magic Man, it's very dreamlike, it's good. And the track that closes the album, it's probably my favourite one at the moment, which is Where But For Caravan Would I Be? It's about nine or ten minutes long, love it. So uh, lots of Hammond organ on this, um, sadly quite a lot of flute as well. I'm not a massive fan of flute, but anyway, lots of kind of um, odd time signatures, tempo changes, intricate harmonies, the kinds of things that you would expect of a band of this era and this genre. Um, fairly budget production, if I'm honest, as well, but all of which kind of captures, if you like, the, the fading smoke of the summer of love. So um, it's only four quid, so uh, a really nice album to add to the collection. Next up is an album, uh, it's on CBS Records, it's from 1969. It's not a band I know anything about, actually. It's called The Flock, and the band obviously are called The Flock. They're a US uh, jazz rock. Some of you may know about them more, much more than I do. Um, it features Jerry Goodman, who went on to play the Mahuvishnu Orchestra. Um, I've no idea how many albums they did. This might be their only one. I'm guessing this is their debut, as it's called The Flock. Um, yeah, reasonably good album, actually. Solid drums and bass, complex trumpet and sax arrangements. Some um, Terry Kath-like distorted guitar, actually. And, of course, some, some violin, which I'm not a massive fan of, but it's OK. Um, lots of uh, tempo changes, lots of mood changes. It's quite free form in places. It's quite a little bit jazzy, a bit melodic in others. Sometimes a bit bluesy, actually. A bit kind of jam-like, if I'm honest. Especially the, the closing track, which is about 15 minutes long. It's called Truth. It's a bit like um, kind of Blood, Sweat and Tears or Chicago Transit Authority. And they're a band, actually, who are from Chicago. So maybe there are some connections there. But uh, so interesting album just for four quid. So it can't be bad. Next up is uh, a really odd compilation, actually, uh, from a band that were allegedly a big influence on Deep Purple in the early days. So this is Vanilla Fudge. Now, I don't really know a huge amount about this uh, band, actually. This is um, a kind of, uh, it's part of a star collection series that also did stuff with Buffalo Springfield, I'm Butterfly, Van Morrison. And this takes uh, a side of vinyl from their album Rock and Roll from 69 and another side of vinyl from near the beginning, I think, also from 69. Um, so it's kind of a strange kind of album, really. But you can see where Deep Purple may have been influenced, actually, by this sound. The organ on here sounds very much like John Lord, actually. There's lots of heavy riffs. There's lots of fuzzy guitar. It's quite weird in places. And if I'm honest, it's not a desperately, um, a desperately easy listen, to be fair. The drummer, Carmine Apisu, appears on lots of albums, actually, over the years. A proper heavy drummer, actually. Quite John Bonham-like, actually. Hits the drums really hard. This is um, kind of like, if you like, proto-metallic psych rock, I would have said. So, yeah, not bad. Two pounds. You can't go wrong, really. Next up is a, a really funky band, actually, that I showed an album by them. I think it was in my last video. An album by them called Stand. Well, this is their second album from 68, I think it is. This is Dance the Music by Sly and the Family Stone, although this is a 73 repress on um, Embassy Records, who did quite a number of really good reissues, actually, of some pretty good albums from the late 60s. Um, it's a good album, super funky, no standout tracks, maybe the... the, the title track dance to the music possibly but a good album for a band that i think were way ahead of their time so really enjoyable little pickup again for cheap next up we're going to some reggae this is red by black uhuru now i've got a couple of albums by them um one is called chill out and this is better than that i think and another one is called Oh, I can't remember. It's the one with Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, which I think I probably prefer to this. But this is really good, actually. 
Really, really enjoyed this. This is a really tight band who play so well off each other. Lots of, you know, the lyrics here are all about kind of social change and, and struggle. Um, some great backup uh, singers in this as well. And it's a really, really good album. The songs aren't always memorable, if I'm honest, um, but they've got such a good groove and a good feel to them. So I'm really enjoying this, actually. So that's Red from about 1981, I think it was, by Black Uhuru. Uh, another reggae album um, I picked up also. This was only four pounds. This is from 1975, and this is Bob Marley and the Wailers Live. I think live at Lyceum. So seven songs. There's the track list in there. Um, quite short, fairly fat free though. Uh, the opening track, which is called Trench Town Rock, that goes back to the very early days of Bob Marley actually. The more iconic songs, as you can see, are on side two. More muscular here than the originals, um, but uh, really good versions. I think I possibly prefer Babylon by Bus to this, um, but it certainly does contain a definitive version of No Woman, No Cry. So there we are. So that's Bob Marley and the Wailers live from 75. Finding uh, Blue Note albums in uh, good condition at a good price I've realised is absolutely impossible. So I have started just to buy some of the more up-to-date represses. Um, and then what you do get is you get albums without any pops and, and crackles and whatever else. So I bought this the other day. This is a 21 repress of a 58, 59 album by Art Blakey and The Messengers. It's called Moaning. I'm sure it's very familiar to all those jazz people out there. Um, I'm not an aficionado of jazz, but I, I quite enjoy this. I wouldn't have said it's classic, um, although I know that some people do regard it as so. Um, Lee Morgan um, makes uh, an appearance on here, as does Bobby Timmins, both of which had very big contributions to the sound of this album, of course. Uh, Benny Golson on tennis, tenor sax, also really good, I think. The title track is fabulous. I love it. Um, and the rest is pretty good too. So I'm kind of, I haven't played it that many times. I'm just kind of getting into it really, but uh, a nice addition to my, my ever increasing Blue Note reissues. That's uh, Art Blake in the Jazz Messengers. Next up is uh, a compilation, a funk compilation uh, from one band and the band is called Parliament. Um, so this is Uncut Funk, uh, The Bomb. This is this is a great introduction to this band, actually. And wow, are this band ever mad? I mean, super funky, but mad. Um, I love Give Up the Funk, Tear the Roof Off the Sucker. That was a quite big hit in, in the UK. Flashlight, also really good as well. There's the track listing. So, you know, just for four pounds, that's a great introduction to this band and probably as much parliament as I'll ever need. But there we are, good stuff. Last thing um, I've got are three blues compilations, actually. Um, so some quite interesting stuff on here. These again were all cheap. The first one up is this one, Kings of the Blues, which is on Top Line Records, which was part of Charlie Records, who did quite a number of really decent uh, reissues, actually. This has got some of the big hitters on it. So it's got Elmore James, Dust My Broom by him. It's got John Lee Hooker, it's got Freddie King on here, Born Under a Bad Sign, Albert King. But it's also got um, Jerry McCain, Guitar Junior, Frank Frost, Billy Boy Arnold. So a real kind of, real, there's the track list in there, a real kind of mix of well-known and lesser kind of blues artists, actually. It also has got um, Somebody Loan Me A Dime by Fenton Robinson, which is a great track. A track that was covered by Boz Skaggs on, I think, his debut album. That is a much longer version on Boz Skaggs' album that features Dwayne Ullman, which is just brilliant. Um, and I think for a while, quite a while, um, Boz Skaggs claimed that he wrote it. But eventually, on the reissues of that debut album by him, um, he acknowledged that Fenton Robinson did actually write it. So... Um, a really quite an interesting album uh, not maybe essential but certainly interesting so a nice balance of well-known and lesser artists next one up is a volume two of the world of blues power i've got volume one i've never seen volume three of which there is one this was a really strange series actually it's on decca records you know the world of and it includes things like um lulu max bygraves uh, Johann Strauss, Vera Lynn, Val Dunican, but it's also got David Bowie. So it's a really strange mix. This is, as I said, volume two. 
Um, it's got a reasonably good track list on it, actually. It's got uh, some uh, John Mayles, some Savoy Brown, some Keith Hartley, uh, 10 years after. So a nice little mix of, of, of blues songs. Again, nice little cheap album to add to my volume one. And I might go looking for volume three. If I think it exists. And the last one, which is probably the pick of the three blues compilations. This is a Philips Fontana Mercury Vanguard sampler. It's called Blues Package 69. And this has got uh, a couple of songs I was really aware of. So it's got Buddy Guy on it, it's got Buddy Miles on it, and it's got uh, Blue Cheer on it. But it's also got some stuff that I haven't heard, actually. So uh, Mother Earth, um, QB and Blizzards is on here. Um, Harsh Reality, John Dummer Blues Band, um, Sweet Pain. Um, so, you know, a real kind of mix of some well-known artists and some fairly kind of obscure ones and a really enjoyable listen actually so again it's only a couple of quid so it was a really nice addition to my ever increasing uh, sampler collection so there you go vinyl community there's 10 albums tell me what you think in the comments below and i'll be back sometime soon with another video cheers <laughs>